follow-up and group quarters evaluation. Testing on those activities in the operational control system will begin on April 20th. We think those two operations test a huge amount of the functionality okay. that we'll use in the other nine operations. Okay, let, me, so, let me stop you right there. Okay. Let me and, and, um, ask you, in the report, GAO stated that in May 2008, the Bureau established an inventory of all testing activities specific to all key decennial operations but that the inventory had not been updated since that time. Uh, what is the current status of testing activities for the 2010 okay. Census? At this point, we do have a comprehensive uh, inventory of all of the testing that we need to do. Uh, given the time constraints that we, under, we are under, there will be some operations that we have performed in the past that we will not test as thoroughly on, uh, as we will, some of the new activities. Where, where is the Bureau on the development of the operations control system for paper-based operations? Okay. At, uh, at the end of January, we uh, integrated uh, the schedule for the operational control system that will control 11 oper paper-based operations in the census. We integrated that into the master uh, activity schedule. Uh, so that is done, and we do have a detailed uh, plan at this point and schedule for what we're calling Release Zero. Release Zero will focus on the non-response follow-up and the group quarters enumeration. Then we'll follow with a Release One, which will take on additional operations such as remote Alaska. So I believe we have a detailed plan that we can move ahead and each one of those releases will have testing as part of the uh, part of the sign-off. And, and at what date certain can we expect you to report to this subcommittee that adequate plans for total end-to-end -end testing are in place? There probably will, to be honest, there will not be end-to-end -end testing of all operations because what we'll have to do is we'll test that key functionality which will show up in uh, sec you know, uh, other operations. Uh, what we are going to do, for example, the push of the non-response follow-up into the response, uh, that functionality we can test based on the no uh, dress rehearsal responses. We'll put up a mock environment that will send workload to be, uh, to be identified for non-response follow-up, and we'll be able to test that in the operational control system that it will control non-response follow-up. You, you heard Mr. Pounder say time is of the essence and you still have six major systems that still need to be tested. Um, are you cognizant that time is of the essence, that we are, we are closing in on a year to go? Mr. Chairman, we are very cognizant that uh, time is of the essence. We have an extremely tight schedule, and it is going to be critically important that we stick to that schedule. Okay. Thank you for that response. Mr. Driehaus, you may follow up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just have one very br brief question uh, for Mr. Messenberg. Mr. Messenberg, uh, I I'm particularly concerned about uh, the number of houses uh, that are currently in foreclosure uh, across the country and the transients we're seeing in, in our population. You know, the, the movements of population that we are seeing, especially in the inner cities, uh, that are traditionally difficult uh, to, under, to, to count, um, are, you know, we're, we're seeing folks move around at, at record levels. And, and I, I'm concerned as to whether or not the Census Bureau is, is taking the necessary steps uh, to account for that movement and how you are coping with that. It is, a, it is a growing problem. There's no doubt about that. The address canvassing operation that we will start at March 30th will visit every address, whether occupied or vacant. So the critical first step is to ensure that we have a complete address list uh, for the 2010 decennial census. So that's job one, to make sure we have the, the list. Uh, Mid-March of next year, we will mail out report forms to every, almost every household in the, in the U.S. 
If that address is vacant, then they, they will not respond the form and they will go into the non-response follow-up operation. Uh, we will send an enumerator to that address to see if anyone is there. If they are there, we'll collect the data. We'll go back six times to make sure uh, that we can reach a person. Uh, if, if it's unoccupied, of course, we'll uh, miss them. Uh, we have taken some steps to address this issue. So we've added two questions to the 10 question 2010 census form that gets at coverage problems. Uh, one of those questions relates to do you have a relative living with you that you may not have listed on the report form. That will kick off an action to put that into, our, uh, into a follow-up activity that will try to identify uh, why that person wasn't listed. Uh, so that will be one way that we'll uh, attempt to address uh, the issue of foreclosures and people moving into non-traditional uh, living arrangements. But I think a key message uh, that our partner, our, both of our advertising and our partnership program will be is to get out into the local community and to convince them through trusted voices in the community that if you are doubling up or if you're living in a non-traditional uh, living arrangement that it's important that you be counted and that you're listed on the report form. Thank you so much. Ben. Mr. McHenry, you're recognized for 10 minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you all for testifying today. Uh, we certainly appreciate it. This is an important matter that we take very seriously, and I know you do as well. Um, Mr. Metzenbarg, Thank you for your service. Um, I know it's only been brief. Um, <laughs> your service in government only 36 years, um, and we thank you for it. Uh, when the short timer, Mr. Jackson, sitting behind you, is only there for 20 years, um, we certainly know you have expertise um, and, and great knowledge based on experience. So thank you. Uh, so, Mr. Metzenberg, um, it's my understanding that there's, there's plans to conduct a post-enumeration survey as part of the 2010 census. Is this correct? We do have plans to do a coverage measurement program as part of the 2010 census. Okay. Um, what is the sample size of this survey? The sample size is going to be about 300,000 housing units. Okay. Is this comparable to the 2000 census? It is comparable to the 2000 census. Is it the, the same number or is it just a, it, it's very close to the same number. Okay. Do you know do you recall what the 2000 number was? I don't off the top of my head, but sure. certainly we can get you that certainly, number. Certainly. Um, and has a bureau um, in, increased or changed uh, the post enumeration survey for this census? We've, uh, we've made some changes to do a better job of trying to uh, identify duplicates in the census. That was an issue in 2000. Uh, the focus of the 2010 coverage measurement program is, is to provide better information about the uh, components of air. So we'll be providing data not only on the net uh, the net error, but also uh, components of error, such as uh, duplicates, omissions, and so on. Has this been changed in the planning process, or is this a change from the 2000 census? This was uh, uh, this has been the plan during the entire decade. Okay. Okay. Um, and how does a bureau intend to use the post enumeration survey? You outlined generally, but. We're using this primarily to provide measures of the air and as a input to improving the 2020 uh, decennial census. Okay. And is there any thought that the Bureau would use this uh, survey to adjust or, or uh, change the 2010 uh, count? Uh, the, there, the plan does not include any, uh, any plans to use the uh, coverage measurement for adjustment. Okay. Is there any other uh, thoughts to that or any other considerations to that? Not, not in our current plan okay. there, is it? 
Okay. Um, and yesterday, as I mentioned in my op opening statement, uh, it's been reported that Commerce Secretary Designee Gary Locke met with leaders of the Senate Commerce Committee and, according to uh, the news report, stated that, quote, so called sampling will be used minimally as an accuracy check, end quote. Um, I, I believe he's referring to the post enumeration surveys. Is that how you'd read it? Well, the coverage measurement will provide estimates of the number of housing units and the number of persons. Uh, then you'll have the apportionment number also. But I, I'm not sure what uh, Governor Locke had in mind. Yeah, Sorry. it's hard to impute from uh, politicians what they mean. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, it, so that would be somewhat in keeping with what you've outlined, just as a, a survey to check the accuracy. Okay. Um, now, in terms of a fair and accurate census, uh, what's your definition of a fair and accurate census? Well, we see job one is to count everyone. And uh, we see uh, an expanded advertising and partnership program as a key part of, uh, of doing that. We also uh, have done a number of additional things from an operational perspective that we hope will improve the count. Uh, this will be the first time we're using a short form only census, so 10 questions, 10 minutes to fill it out. Um, we also will be using a bilingual form, English, Spanish, that will target 13 million uh, households in primary in areas where uh, English is not uh, often spoken at home. Mm -hmm. um, we will be using a second mailing, uh, a targeted second mailing, and doing a blanket mailing to traditionally low response, low mail response areas, and then sending a replacement form out to uh, uh, to another group uh, to the non-respondents. Um, and we hope and expect that a, that a much more robust partnership program will get the message out to the local mm -hmm. community that it's critical to participate in the census. So in short, do you believe the, the Bureau's main goal for the 2010 census is to count every person once, only once, um, and at the right place? That's always been our goal. All right. And so that means a, a, a count, not an account of people. That means uh, an, an exact enumeration and counting. We will make every effort we can to get a response, uh, an actual response back from every household in the U.S. Uh, two of the greatest challenges, you've, you've mentioned this and, and I'm glad the Bureau has really thought through the undercount and overcount uh, numbers and, and uh, appreciate the fact that you, you have programs directly uh, focused on the undercount. Um, and, and would you describe the, the challenge of the undercount and the overcount as one of the most uh, challenging of the challenges the Bureau faces in the 2010 Census? Well, the, uh, I think it would be clear the uh, getting people to participate is the biggest challenge. So missing people is, uh, in my mind, a more significant challenge than uh, addressing the duplicates. We've done both things. We've added two coverage questions to the 2010 census. One's to help us get at undercount where someone incorrectly or mistakenly left a person off the report form that should have been on the report form. And we have added another question to help address the overcount where someone may have included, let's say, for example, a college student that should have been uh, counted at the uh, dorm where they, uh, they spend most of their time. Okay. So there are two questions there, and answers to those questions will generate uh, a telephone call as part of our coverage follow-up operation to try to uh, gather more information to uh, get the person counted in the right place. Well, um, you know, I, I think we all understand the sensitivities of ensuring that uh, undercounted communities and uh, and people uh, are, uh, you know, focused upon and, and ensure that we actually uh, get them counted. 
uh, which takes a lot of effort, uh, a lot of resources, and we want to be of assistance to that with you and the stakeholders in this. And with that, I'd like to yield the remainder of my time to uh, uh, the Deputy Ranking Member, Congressman Westmoreland from Georgia. Well, thank you, uh, Congressman McHenry. Uh, first, to uh, Mr. Goldenkoff and Mr. Browner. You know, I've been in quite a few of these oversight hearings, and I've seen uh, a lot of. Uh, reports from the GAO and I've never seen one that said y'all are doing a great job uh, you know so I know that y'all uh, do a very uh, good job but this comes pretty close when it says that there are no new recommendations now is that because you didn't go in and look at everything again or, or are you just going on a past report either one of you I think what you're referring to is our, our testimony today and the reason that there are no new recommendations is that all our recommendations are, okay. can you pick it up? Okay. Maybe if you move it closer to you, Mr. Golden Carl. Okay. Sorry. Um, I think what you're referring to is, is our testimony where we said that there were no new recommendations. That was just because um, our testimony was based on previously issued work, some of, most of which did contain recommendations. Okay. And so one of those recommendations. Congressman Westmore, I just want to be clear. Okay. We're releasing a report today on system testing, so not to disappoint, we have 10 new recommendations today that we're releasing for the first time on testing. Okay. Okay. W one of the other um, things that uh, you had talked about was the uh, accurate, complete and accurate address list. Is that correct? That's correct. When do you think the best time would have been to get a complete and accurate address list? Uh, uh, yeah. the best, it, it's something that, that goes on throughout the decade. The Bureau is constantly working with the Postal Service through the Postal Service's deli delivery sequence file to update the address list. And now, as, as was already mentioned, um, or starting um, in April, the Bureau will go out and actually walk every street in the country um, to verify on the ground um, uh, House, housing units, um, uh, occupied housing units. And it, it's, it's a difficult task um, because uh, it's not always clear what meets the eye. You know, there could be several families living in there. And so you really have to go within six inches of a house sometime to see double doorbells, two names on a mailbox that could indicate that there might be somebody living in the basement or in the shed in the back. So it is a very challenging task. I understand, but uh, the reality of it is, I guess, uh, the last address check is going to be the most accurate. And, and all the, the, you know, to me, at least the Census Bureau, from information and testimony I heard today from Mr. Mossenborg, is that uh, they have asked local cities and counties and others to do that, and they are trying to make sure that the information that they have before they do the mailing is also the most recent and most up-to-date and the most correct information. Would you agree with that? that? That is correct. You need to do it as close as possible to Census Day, but at the same time allow for the updating to take place so they can do the mail-out. So there, there needs to be a, a, some, some buffer in there. Thank you. Thank you. To Westmoreland. Uh, my friend from New York, Ms. Maloney, is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I'd like to ask uh, the representatives from GAO uh, to respond to the earlier question on whether or not uh, the operational testing on payroll, p personal changes, et cetera, were up to the systems of 2000. Are they at the same level? Are, they, are you pleased uh, and agree with the prior answers to this question that operational testing was uh, correct in place and uh, happening to the degree that it should uh, to make sure that our systems uh, do not falter or fail? Yeah. The, no, I, I would disagree with that. that, that you know, one of the issues is that, that there was no de dress rehearsal. And the dress rehearsal, as the name implies, um, it's essentially a, a, a test census as, and under as close to census-like conditions as one could possibly get um, without actually conducting the census. And so because it was curtailed, the, the, the dress, what was done during the dress rehearsal was, was fairly limited, there were certain operations that just weren't tested. And so the Bureau is going into 2010 now with the actual conducting the actual census uh, in some respects um, flying blind that for example there was no load testing the number of you know there's millions of forms millions of pieces of paper need to be processed um, and the bureau never had an opportunity to test under 
in a lot of cases anything close to a load test of what would be a, 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 simulate, a simulated census. Well, so it really fell quite well, short well, of that. What are the contingencies if these systems uh, falter or fail? What are the contingencies? In some cases, well, the, the Bureau, um, if it starts falling behind, um, mm -hmm. there, the Bureau has been good in, in the past um, with workarounds and patches. Um, it all depends on how bad the, the, the problem is. Um, you know, in some cases, the Bureau will fall behind schedule. Um, and that has implications for downstream operations. Um, in other cases, um, it might, things might cost more money. Um, but that is one of the, the, the issues, is that in some cases there is no backup or there is no contingency. It has to be done and done right. I would like to uh, uh, follow up with a question on the budget. You really can't uh, move forward without a proper budget. And uh, do you have a full 10-year uh, cycle cost estimate for the decennial operations that you could give the committee today? <coughs> Mr. Messon. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Our, our expectation is the life cycle cost is going to be between 14 and 15 billion dollars for the decennial census. Mm -hmm. If I could, I would like to just respond briefly on the payroll system. Uh, the decennial applicant payroll system is up and running. So this is the key tool that we use uh, to process applicants and then to pay them. So at this point in time, we have uh, over a million applicants in that system. We are actually only going to hire about 140,000 people for address canvassing. But the, uh, the demand for jobs has been so huge that we have had over a million applicants. And right now we have got about 10,000 people in the, that are getting paid through this system. And uh, in another couple of weeks that will jump up by about 140,000. Um, how much money were you given in the stimulus plan? We were giving, uh, given $1 billion. $1 billion? $1 billion. Yes. And what are your plans? for spending the additional money you were given in the stimulus plan? Um, the whole focus of this is a good, to do as good a job as we can improving uh, the count. And the, uh, the bill language uh, directed us to focus that money on enhanced and improved advertising and partnership activities, and that certainly is our intention. We also hope to invest additional uh, monies in our coverage follow-up operation, uh, adding about another million to the workload, and then the remainder of the funds would be, uh, would be there to support key 2010 activities. But in the short term, in terms of 2009, uh, uh, the expenditures will be primarily focused on expanded media buys and advertising and our partnership program. Mm -hmm. and, uh, with the remaining money to make uh, other choices, what is your basis for making these choices? Do you have an analysis of what needs to be done or other areas that you need help and support to make a more accurate census? Uh, our criteria ha have been to focus on that ac those activities that will contribute uh, the most to the, to the census. And actually, we have provided a plan to the Office of Management and Budget in terms of what our focus is, and we are awaiting their response at this point. Okay. Thank you very much. And our time is, my time has expanded, has, is no Thank longer. I have used up my time. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so for much, all your hard Ms. work. Ms. Maloney, I, I now go to the gentleman from Utah, Mr. Chaffetz, for uh, five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Messenberg, are you you're a career civil servant, correct? Yes, I am. Um, with more than adequate funding, do you believe the Bureau has the talent and capability to oversee a professionally implemented and successful 2010 Census? I do. Um, I would like your opinion as the Census Bureau professional on an important matter. You are currently operating without a presidentially appointed uh, Senate confirmed director, correct? That is true. Do you believe the Bureau has the talent and expertise to continue planning for and implementing a successful 2010 census Census? without a presidentially appointed Senate confirmed director? Well, I am doing two jobs at this point. <laughs> and I, and I, I guess I, what I see my job is right now is to continue to execute the plans to conduct a successful 2010 census. 
I have no ambitions to be permanent director of the Census Bureau. Uh, but my job is to keep that train moving down the track so when we do get a Census Bureau director, we are in a better place than, than we were uh, you know, before. But do you believe that the uh, Bureau has the talent and expertise currently in, in place right now to execute? I, I believe we have the talent to keep the train moving down the track. I am not going to take a position whether we should uh, uh, have a director or not have a director. We have always had a director <laughs> and I, would, uh, I think a director would be useful for us. Um, as you know, the, uh, the results of the 2010 Census are used for apportionment redistricting at all levels of government and the allocation of Federal funds. All of this is correct, right? That is true. So in your opinion, is it better to conduct a census that is free from political influence or do you think politicians should be telling you how to do your job? Well, the Census Bureau, uh, in my 36 years, we have always acted, uh, we have made decisions, technical decisions and program decisions on the technical merits of the issues. We have not made decisions based on uh, any kind of uh, political pressure. That has been my experience over 36 years. In the, uh, the census is based on the Constitution, correct? That's true. I don't. Do you recall which article or whatnot? Uh, That's right. embarrassing to article, say. Not <laughs> Article One of the Constitution deals with the powers of Congress, the legislative branch of our government. Correct. True. So, regarding anything having to do with the conduct of the census, it should be the Congress that has the authority and jurisdiction. Do you agree? You are getting me into uh, territory I am not a skill, <laughs> I am not an expert on. It is clear the Congress has a clear, uh, has a responsibility to oversee our operations. Yes, I would agree with that. How, um, how will the Bureau protect the integrity of the Census from outright fraud? From, I am sorry, outright? Just outright fraud. What, what, what protectors are in place to make sure that that doesn't happen? We have, uh, we have a whole series of uh, quality control operations that we have in place that, uh, that check uh, the operation. So, for example, when we start address canvas, well, I will give you a, a better example. Right now, we are uh, about 90 percent done with the large block enumeration. And after that, we're all, now we have started to send uh, QC people, other enumerators out to check the quality of that work. And that is the test. Every operation that we do will have a QC uh, operation attached to it. And that is going to be, um, that will be one check. Another check in terms of housing unit counts and person counts will be our POP estimates program that makes most of those. That is another quality check that we have. So you have, if you have an enumerator, enumerator who fraudulently fills out data and then, and then submits these facts, do you believe there is a check and a balance in place? I do to, to believe that we have a, a check in place that will uh, identify that problem. Um, yeah. What is it to keep somebody who is, uh, gets in the form the mail, it gets the form in the mail and then knowingly fills it out incorrectly? I mean, grossly incorrectly. What? How do we deal with that? Well, there'll be some uh, there'll be some additional checks against some administrative record uh, information that we have access to, uh, but that's going to be very very difficult to catch every every one of those if a person added a an extra individual uh, in the process. But we will, we will do some re-interviewing there. So if it is systematic on the part of a numerator, then we would catch it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Massenborg, let us uh, go back to the operational control system. Uh, the OCS is the brains of the whole system of the field operations. When will end-to-end -end testing for the OCS be in place? Okay. Uh, the the actual the first testing will be done uh, April 20th through May 1st. Uh, so what we've done because of the timing pressures that we're under, we're going to address key operations on an incremental 
uh, process. So the actual final testing will be not will not be done on all of those interfaces until next March. Mr. Pounder or Mr. Golden Carver, is that uh, adequate as far as the uh, the uh, response to 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 ensure? Well, I, I think the key, it's, it's, a, it's a tough challenge for them because not everything is in place. So part of what they are dealing with is you want to test what you have now, but I think it is very important, as was stated, that you come back and retest. The key here, though, is there is a lot of, the, there's a lot of this, this, these examples in place. We have six major systems. We heard 244 interfaces, 44 operations. Okay, so when you start looking at all that, getting it all done and testing it in an integrated fashion end to end as you are asking, Mr. Chairman, you see, we don't see all the prioritization and the plans in place. So going forward, what is very important is that we see the appropriate plans, but then we have key metrics so we know exactly what is done, how well it is done, and then what remains ahead mm -hmm. to complete. Uh, and, and the OCS is just one example of many challenges that they face going forward between now and Census Day. Okay. Um Mr. Golden Kopp, the, uh, the Bureau has many challenges facing its final preparations and con conduct of the uh, 2010 decennial census. Uh, what do you think places the 2010 census at greater risk and uh, what can be done about it? I, I think the, the really two great, great risks. Um, one, time is running out and two, um, the lack of testing of key operations. So as was already stated here today, the Bureau needs to prioritize um, what it can do, what it can't do, um, figure out where, you know, within all those uh, different operations and activities that haven't been tested, where the Bureau is most vulnerable. Um, and secondly, make sure everything stays on, on track. Um, a third area um, is perhaps more um, marketing and, and promotion because the non-response uh, or the response rate rather um, is, is key to success. You know, address canvassing uh, is set to begin nationwide within a few weeks. Um, the Bureau never was able to carry out an end-to-end -end test of the new handheld devices with all other procedures in the field. Uh, how prepared is the Bureau to conduct address canvassing and how can the Bureau be confident that everything will work as the Bureau hopes uh, without having tested it all? Well, I, I think that's, you know, the Bureau does, does not know what it doesn't know because, again, the lack of testing. They, they had the operational field test in Fayetteville, North Carolina, and what that demonstrated was that under the conditions in Fayetteville, North Carolina, the handhelds functioned uh, well, uh, the, pro the problems that we had seen in earlier tests did not reemerge. Um, the problem is, is that obviously the country does not all look like Fayetteville, North Carolina. You have urban areas, you have more rural areas, and so the question is, how will those handhelds perform, for example, in um, an area with lots of skyscrapers? Um, will they be able to lock on to a satellite signal? Will they be able to transmit data? Um, so, and that's what. Nobody really knows. It, it is a big question mark. Should, uh, should we be worried about the census being conducted on time? I think that it will, you know, it come April 1st, you know, forms will go out by law if they, they need to. Um, the question is really accuracy and, um, and quality uh, of, of the sense, accuracy and cost rather. That's really what it comes down to. Key operations, they will get done. They need to get done. It's just a question of how much will things cost and how good will the results be. Okay. The, at the end of the day, the data need to be delivered to the President come December 31st, um, uh, 2010. 2010. Uh, um, so whether they need to compress operations or um, speed things up at some point, um, that's, they, they are under the gun. And so. You know, things will happen on time. It's just a question of you know cost and accuracy. Sure, thank you. Uh, when the census, Mr. Powder, when the Census Bureau provided comments on the GAO's report, it stated that it was putting much more focus on testing new things for 2010 and not testing things that have worked before. Uh, what is GAO's assessment of the Bureau's comment? Uh, we would not agree with that. It's important, uh, clearly it's important to test new things, 
But if you have old things that are critical and you change software and hardware associated with that, that needs to be tested. And that was really the focus of our report. It's really based on a prioritization. So the prioritization might be new things, but it could very well be older things also. Thank you for that response. And I, I will recognize the gentleman from Georgia, Mr. Westmoreland, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And just following up on uh, some of the comments that the gentleman from Utah had, uh, Mr. Mor Morsenberg, what quality controls are you going to have on these enumerators? We, uh, uh, gentleman from Utah, questioned about them filling out the forms wrong, but. What kind of quality controls do you have on these enumerators? Okay, every every major operation we have um, we have a QC activity related to that. Uh, so we'll actually go take a sample of the enumerations, and we'll have a different person go back and attempt to collect that same data, and that provides us a uh, uh, a, a clear signal in terms of the quality. Uh, if there are issues uh, related uh, to a specific interview, we call that operation a re-interview operation to identify problems. Uh, if we identify a problem, then we will zero in on that uh, enumerator and then do a 100 percent check of all of their work. But every operation we do, we are going to have a QC step built into it to check the quality of it. Okay. And let's say that you do correctly identify an enumerator, what kind of corrective actions would be, could be taken? Uh, they could be terminated uh, and certainly they would be out of the enumerating uh, business at, uh, as soon as we identified that. Okay. Uh, I know that the Bureau, as you have mentioned, uh, will automatically mail a second census form to these uh, traditionally, I guess, hard to count areas or the no response. Oh, that's correct, right. You will do a second mailing. Yeah, second mailing, a uh, blanket second mailing to areas that have, that have a traditional very low mail response. We'll do a blanket mailing and then we'll have another group that's uh, sort of intermediary, possibly under 50 percent. Then we will mail the non-respondents, the, the households that hadn't returned a form. We'll get a form there. Okay. So you feel comfortable that you're going to hit these under response areas very well. Uh, with a second mailing? We, we've tested the second mailing during the decade. Uh, we used it during the dress rehearsal. Uh, we're confident that it will be beneficial. So you believe the second mailing is going to enhance your response? Yes. How will you ensure that the data capture isn't wrongfully counted twice for those that return forms from both mailings? Now, what, what's your system in place there to check that? Okay. In terms of data, uh, data capture, forms will come, uh, will be returned and go through one of our automated uh, three data capture systems. They actually do OCR on the forms. Then we will do uh, a matching operation. Every form will have a unique 22-digit identifi identifier on that. If we can't match, that generates a whole host of additional uh, investigative work. Okay, so, so we have an automated process to make sure that we are not getting duplicate returns in. Thank you. And uh, uh, Mr. Goldenkopf, uh, do you believe that uh, because of all the stuff that we've been hearing in the news about we need a director, we don't have a director or whatever, you and Mr. Uh, Prowler, do you believe that the uh, Bureau has the right talent in-house to oversee this 2010 census? The Bureau employees, they are extremely dedicated, extremely competent, um, and they have lots of experience. Um, the concern is, is that here it's getting, you know, with 10 yards to go until the goal line, census day, um, there's no permanent quarterback in place. And the other issue to consider as well, you know, not only who's calling the shots, who's being held accountable by Congress um, to the American taxpayers. Um, this is also the time when the Bureau starts planning for the next census, the 2020 census. And so you need somebody in place who uh, will take on, who will be responsible and held accountable for that as well in making those sorts of, of decisions. 
So clearly the competency is, is there. There's, there's no question about that. We've seen it in past decennials. But we need someone who is a strategic leader um, and someone who is, you know, goes through the conventional selection process. Okay. Um, given that this short form, and it's only a short form for the census, um, do you think that better equips the Bureau to conduct this census than in previous most Sina. definitely. It, it, it should improve the response rate because it's less burdensome than having a, a short form and a long form. I mean, the, back in 2000, um, studies have shown that the response rate to the short form was higher than to the long form. So, you know, you're more willing to spend 10 minutes than 40 minutes on, on the right. long form. So it makes it a little important. easier for them to fill it out. That is and, correct. And probably not as uh, deep a questions or personal questions as it was. But is my time up, Mr. Chairman? Yes, Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Westmore. I recognize the gentleman from Utah for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Pounder, do you believe that there's uh, enough talent to uh, oversee and conduct the 2000 Census? From a technology point of view, and for 2020, the Census Bureau needs more IT talent on board, clearly. Uh, if you look at what happened last summer with FITC, the FITCA problems, uh, fortunately we have organizations like MITRE. They hired some external folks to come in and help at executive levels. Uh, going forward, there's folks that are trying to do a good job there right now, but going forward we need more IT talent internal to the Bureau. To, uh, like previous uh, uh, decennials, the, the Bureau is using paper and pencil for non-response follow-up. But unlike previous years, we've had better maps for enumerators, a targeted second mailing of the census form to the hard to count areas, and likely a better applicant pool from which to hire these enumerators. Shouldn't all these factors lead to more accurate census? Uh, yes, they, they, they should um, lead, lead to a more ac accurate census. Um, it's, you can handle the non-response follow-up workload faster, which, which is important because it reduces recall error. So all those things you mentioned should uh, lead to that direction. And if you could just summarize for me again real quickly, the major hurdles that you see and if any of these hurdles, uh, you know, what the cons consequences would be if we aren't able to overcome those hurdles? Well, first, um, time is running out. There's just no time for, for missteps. There's no slack in the schedule. So to the extent that challenges or or glitches emerge and those things are inevitable, something comes up in testing, there's not a whole lot of time left to figure out uh, what, what the workaround is. Um, secondly, um, the population is complex, demographically complex, um, and so as we said in, in, in my statement that a key challenge is converting that awareness of the census into an actual response. Bureau has been very good in terms of getting the word out. People, 90 percent of the population or so, is typically aware of the census, but the re actual response rate is, is much lower. So that would be another hurdle. Would you concur or disagree that the, uh, the census is rooted in Article I of the Constitution, which enumerates the powers of the legislative branch? Oh, um, I will pass on, on that <laughs> one. I, will. I guess the, the, the question is, uh, who, who do you believe the census director reports to? Well, legally, um, to the Commerce Secretary, and that I believe is in, in statute. And is it uh, your experience from past decennials that the director often briefed the president but never, quote unquote, reported to him? Well, I mean, for what we've seen in news accounts and also from some experience during the Bush administration, um, there was some contact between um, the census director um, and, and the White House, OMB. Um, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, it was reported here today. The but communication is a little different than actually reporting right, to. Right, and they're, they're two different things. It's one thing for the White House to um, be aware of and, and make sure that the census stays on track, but it's, that is not a reporting relationship. Um, but in terms of um, holding the Bureau accountable, it's a very powerful tool um, to have White House involvement. The thing is that the, the White House, it has to be that right balance between focusing on management and operational issues versus the science of the census. You don't want the White House or any political influence um, on the science of, of taking the census. Very good. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just one one question for for Dr. Himes. Um, you know, the, the bureau is working with MITRE on uh, mitigation plans. Um, what are your greatest concerns about um, timetables and the plans? So I think again our our. Uh, our greatest concern would be uh, those that GAO has, has put together that um, the time to test and verify uh, where the systems are working, uh, particularly from a, uh, a system view. So we think that um, uh, there are tools in place that give census better insights into uh, the status of their systems than they've had in the past. and. Um, the people that are working on them have uh, uh, substantial experience, uh, but it's still a fairly large burden considering the amount of time uh, remaining to track that whole activity end to end. Thank you so much for that response, Dr. Hand. I'll yield uh, to Mr. Westmore. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate that. I just I didn't have any other questions, but uh, well, Mr. Goldenkoff passed on the. Uh, Article one of the Constitution question, I felt like we might want to discuss that a little bit further, uh, that the GAO understands uh, that uh, we feel like the census, the origin of the census is rooted. Oh, that, no, quite Article yeah, one, in, section in, in two, article, maybe I misunderstood you know, the, the, the question. In Article one of the Constitution, then, which enumerates the power of the legislative branch. And so, yes. you know, I just wanted to make sure that you understood that and you were just passing on the question maybe for no, I guess I, I misunderstood yeah. the question. I, I, I apologize, okay. but definitely yeah. it's Article One, Section Two, and that spells out the basic uh, requirements and, and, of the census. And you know, I think, uh, and Mr. Chairman, I would like to just make a, just a comment, if I could, that we all understand how important this census is uh, for redistricting, for the um, uh, allocation of federal money. And uh, I'm very pleased with the testimony that we've heard today because I think that uh, everybody on that panel wants to have an accurate count, an enumeration of everybody in this country, people who were here at the time of the census. And so I think that's the reason that, you know, there's been so much uh, uh, about, you know, whether the White House wants to have it reported to or the a commerce secretary, uh, there is or is not a director. I feel very confident from just the information I've heard from uh, the Census Bureau and, and the acting director there and from the GAO and the things that they've looked at that this process is going forward about as well as it could and that there's been a lot of hard work uh, put into it. And so I think that the reason there's so much going on right now is everybody wants to make sure that every person is counted. And so um, I appreciate all of you coming. I want to thank the chairman for having this hearing because I think he recognizes the importance to each and every one of us and the fact that we get a very accurate count. And so with that, Mr. Chairman, I'd yield back to balance my time. Thank you, Mr. Westmoreland. And, uh, you know, in, in conclusion, let me thank the witnesses for their testimony today. I can ask just one. Oh, one you have another sorry. question? Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, I'll yield <laughs> to Mr. McKinley. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to get this on the record. Uh, Mr. Metzberg, <clears throat> from the Census Bureau's perspective, and I, I'm sure you'd, you, these are questions you'd like to answer, uh, any and all the information obtained from the Census forms cannot be used uh, for any other purpose, including tax or law enforcement purposes. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Many of us have received feedback from our constituents regarding privacy concerns. Obviously very, very, uh, very much in, in mind today especially. But information given by people to the Census Bureau is confidential by law. Is that correct? By law, by Title 13. All right. Um, and the main challenge is, uh, well, Getting people to respond is one of the main challenges, yeah, as you mentioned. So um, is there, because people maybe have a mistrust of government, um, what efforts are you taking to ensure that, uh, that people know that any information given to them, uh, giving, given to them is 
uh, kept only within the Census Bureau and not shared with any other government agency, department, or any other, any other individual? Well, that, that information will, will be on the report form that everybody receives, but probably more importantly, it's going to be a key focus of our advertising message and our partnership program. So it's one thing for the Census Bureau to tell people it's confidential. In the uh, hard to reach segments of the population, our partnership program is aimed to get a trusted voice in that community to tell people that live in that community. And our partnership specialists will be hired from the community that they are working in, that you, you can trust uh, the Census Bureau uh, that they will hold your data confidential. Certainly. And finally, if um, uh, you and your staff could uh, prepare a follow-up for this. This is uh, too long of a question. Our time is short. Um, I would like to know the Census Bureau's full plan to minimize the undercounts and overcounts. Uh, and I know you already have plans in place, but if we could uh, receive that, I think that would be important for committee members to hear the, the full breadth and depth of your plan and so we can also uh, see ways that we can engage other stakeholders. And certainly. And thank you all. And thank you, Mr. Chairman. Very I certainly good. appreciate Very it. Very good. Thank you. And uh, the, the first major um, operation of the 2010 Census uh, address canvassing begins on March 30th. Uh, there will not be any other opportunities to build a complete and accurate address list. Uh, time is of the essence. Uh, it is critical that the Bureau work with GAO, uh, MITRE, and use every resource available uh, to get this right. Uh, six major systems still need to be tested. The life cycle cost estimate needs to be validated uh, and, and testing must be prioritized. Uh, let me thank all of the witnesses for coming today uh, and, and thank the members of this committee for their singular focus uh, and, and their commitment to seeing uh, that the 2010 Census uh, be successful. And on that note, uh, this hearing is adjourned.